Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Sir Shakirin from Computer Science DC024. This is our first lecture for this week. Approach in problem solving. Before we proceed with the notes, let's we look to the Google search to find out what is actually definition of problem solving in computer. If we find the search, if we search to the Google, the problem solving in computer can be explained as problem solving is a process of identifying a problem, developing an algorithm for the identified problem, and finally implementing the algorithm to develop a computer program. For, from this definition shows that the problem solving in a computer focus on developing a computer program or computer software. And this problem solving is a basic for the programmer to develop a software, apps, or any program. Hi. Okay, class. Let's begin with the first topic for this week approach in problem solving at the end of this topic you should be able to list and describe five steps in problem solving what is problem solving problem solving is the process of transforming the description of a problem into a solution the description of a problem into a solution by using our knowledge of the problem domain and by relying on our ability to select and use appropriate problem solving strategies techniques and tools five steps in problem solving in computer is shows below step one problem analysis Step 2, design a solution. Step 3, implementation. Step 4, testing. And step 5, documentation. Now, let's we look to the, the explanation of the first step, problem analysis. In problem analysis, a programmer are going to discuss what kind of types of problem that we're going to be happy in the problem statement usually three types of problem or control section can be shown the first problem or control section is a sequence problem means it's a series of statement that execute one after another the second types of problem is selection which the programmer have to determine based on a certain condition which different statement need to be executed and the third types of problem is looping repeat a same process for a few of time let's look to the simple example of sequence problem types find sum of two numbers example of selection find student status if CGPA greater than 2.0 status is pass. It will display the word pass. Example of looping find area of circle for 1000 times. An analysis of a problem statement to identify input to the problem the relevant process to produce output and the required output. An analysis of a problem statement to identify input process and output. Output is what to find or calculate. Input, what data is needed to get the output. And process is explanation of how to process the data to get the output. 
Okay, now we lose to the example one of sequent problem analysis. We look to the problem statement here. The problem is calculate sum of two numbers. Calculate sum of two numbers. For the new B programmer, let's look to the this to the these two item sum two numbers. This is a main item in this problem statement. Now let's look to the solution of the this problem statement. For the problem analysis, we are going to see what is input, process, and output. The flow of the input, process, and output is start with the input, followed by the process, and end by the output. Let's look to the answer. The input here is no one, no two. The process is calculate sum, and output is what we have to calculate in the process, that is a sum. If you see here, the word sum in the process and the output for the sum is the same. It must be same because it's the same thing and it must be consistent. Now let's look to the example number two. Problem statement. Calculate average of three numbers. Compared to the example one, now in the example two, we are using three numbers. Guess what is the input? Try to check in. Okay, the answer is, the input is, because we need the three numbers, we have to input no one no two and no three to show that there is a three data needed for that problem statement and the process is to calculate average and this average is same for the output it must consistent now let's look to the example three problem statement calculate area of rectangle the idea here what is actually data needed for the rectangle the data needed needed for the rectangle as a math formula is length and width both data are needed for to find the area of rectangle now what is the answer what is the I, P, and O for this problem statement? Yes, the input is, we need to input the data length and width. And the process for calculate area of rectangle is calculate area of rectangle. And the output must consistent to the process is the area of rectangle. Let's move to this example 4. Problem statement here. Calculate price of book after 10% discount. Calculate price of book. Calculate price of book after 10% discount. We have two items here. What is actually input for this statement? For this example 4, the input is price of book. Or we can also use the another words like price before discount. And the process is to calculate net price after 10% discount or after 10% discount deducted. And the output is net price. The net price show the, the real price or the new price after the 10% discount. And this also must be consistent.
Okay. Now we look to the example number five. Price of a car after six percent service tax. SST. The input is it actually same like the example four, but the example four is related to the price of book, but because we are discussing the price of car, the input is price of car. Calculate net price after six percent SST. And the output is net price. Consistent. I think that's all for today. In the next video, we are going to look for the the second types of problem on the contrast section is a selection. That's all for today. See you next week. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye.